Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Uh, this is Shoe Talks Quarantine Edition. Today it's a um, double feature, uh, and I'm going to be talking with Jeff of Jitterbug Boy up in Canada. I've been following his work. It's just amazing to see what comes out of his work workshop. Um, I want to hear all about it. Um, he's on live right now, so I will request for him to join me. Okay, it says waiting for Jitterbug Boy. Hold on. Let me try. Oop. You can see I'm in the laundry room. Okay, hold on. Yep, Jeff. Did that work? Yes. Hey. Hi. Sorry, How I think you? I messed that up. I'm good. How you yes. doing? Good. You can hear me all right. Yes, I hear you. Great. Oh, oh good. my goodness. Your shop looks amazing. It's full of last and like it's so organized. Uh, it's it's it, get, getting there. It's a bit of a mess right now. Yeah. But yeah, I'm doing my best. Yeah. How have you been doing? Are you alone in the shop right now? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I am alone in the shop. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's going on in Canada? So you're quarantining, you can't have your team here yet? Yeah, that's right. We, I think we're into like the ninth week or something of quarantine. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I had to send my crew home like the 23rd or something of March. Uh, uh -huh. The government kind of said that's it. And now just waiting to be able to bring people back, you know. It's, yeah. It's really lonely already. I've been like tidying so much in spite of the fact that it looks like absolute chaos in here it doesn't uh, look like a chaos it looks really organized oh good how are <laughs> things going there how's your move going oh oh good good thank you yeah. um i just took a break over today's actually memorial day here in u.s i don't know in canada i don't no. think it's no right no we had the holiday last monday it was uh, victoria day here yeah. okay yeah so yesterday i just took a day off today mm -hmm. i'm gonna start organizing a little bit <laughs> it's it's not easy workshop is the hardest i think home moving homes i love moving actually but oh, yeah. yeah i don't mind moving but uh shop workshop was actually harder than i i forgot about it i think yeah. how long have you been in the previous space were you in there a long time or? um i've been there five years and then before that another five years and another shop but okay. you know when you're moving to a bigger space it's easier to just bring everything but yes. when you know that you're like okay i need to downsize you know that's when it's harder yeah totally so i i i've been in this space for like 11 and a half years i think wow and i spent part of quarantine just going through boxes and emptying them out and get it like i had stuff that I hadn't opened in 11 years or probably oh, wow. 15 years since wow. I just moved from the other space. Right. It's amazing how much crap you just accumulate. Huh? <laughs> and you've done it for so long. So have you grown your space gradually as well? Yeah. Yeah. I started in another space that was not nearly this nice, a uh, uh, little bit further downtown. I mean, the area Toronto I'm in is called Parkdale, which is... Okay kind of like west of downtown uh -huh. I was a little bit further closer to downtown in Parkdale in a really rundown building for the first three and a half years uh -huh. and then that building sold this building was actually the one I wanted to get into originally because it was quite close to the flat I was living in at the time uh -huh. uh, but it was the same landlord there wasn't anything available here so I ended up going there and then when, by the time that place sold, one of the tenants was moving out here. It was a slightly nicer space, slightly bigger. Yeah. So the landlord asked if I'd be interested. Yeah. Oh, so that's I'm, great. Yeah. So that was like, yeah, getting on 12 years ago. And then probably like, I can't even judge time anymore, probably about eight years ago, uh -huh. uh, the crew was starting to get bigger and the studio actually what's right behind me. There used to be uh -huh. a wall and then oh, okay. kind of right past these last is a separate yeah. studio that came available. So we expanded into that. Expanded it. Oh, yeah. that's great. That and then we've great. actually taken over <laughs> another, space. another unit across the hall that's just storage. But I'm trying desperately during quarantine to get that all sorted and finished out just so we can, you know, financially downsize a little bit yeah. by the time we get through all yeah. this. Yeah, no, all this. Yeah, I totally hear you. Um, <laughs> 
I would love to hear how you started. So how did you start shoemaking? And how did you get into your theater and film shoes? I, I actually come from a theater background. Okay. Like, I, I've been working in theater since I was like a kid. Like I was 13 oh. or 14 when I started in. So I actually got into shoes through theater. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like shoemaking for me started probably a little over 20 years ago. Uh -huh. but, but, you know, I've been working in theater for over 30 years and I've, I've done all sorts of aspects in that. Like I, I used to be an electrician and a carpenter, a props maker, wow. costume person. Yeah. Okay. So I used to wow. do kind of a little bit of everything, kind of like a jack of all trades type yeah. of thing. And then, um, yeah, and then shoes came up totally, totally out of the blue. Um, what I really wanted to do was become a designer. And uh -huh. that was kind of partly why I was doing so many things with the theater. Mm -hmm. Wanted to do set and costume design. And then I ended up becoming a set and costume designer and the, it just didn't work for me. It just wasn't, yeah, it just didn't do it. It just, no. I didn't do well at it and it just wasn't the right lifestyle for me. So I got completely out of theater and uh -huh. uh, was like, <laughs> literally went off and worked on a farm for six months or something like that. Uh -huh. And then uh, it was like 98 or 99, Lion King was coming to Toronto. Uh -huh. And they were setting up a costume shop for it. And they had a shoe coordinator set for it, who then um, suddenly couldn't do it. So they were left oh. without a shoe coordinator. Right. I'd, I'd worked with the woman who was setting up the workshop, uh -huh. uh, both kind of in a prop and costume sort yeah. of background. So she knew yeah. I had like hands-on skills. Yeah. So she asked if I would do it and they hired on a shoemaker to do all the builds and uh -huh. he, he kind of showed me the ropes of shoes. How and, to make shoes, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I, I mostly took it because I needed a job because I was <laughs> dirt poor and working <laughs> on a farm. So I moved back to Toronto and I started doing this gig and, you know, it's supposed to be four months or something. And uh -huh. the more I did with it... Uh, Fred Mike Comrie, uh, Michael Comrie is his name uh, now, but uh, he was the shoemaker who, who taught me a lot of the basics when I first uh -huh. started. Uh -huh. And then as we got into it, he actually decided he no longer wanted to continue on with shoes. He oh. decided to get into upholstering, uh, custom okay. upholstery instead. So oh. he started showing me little bits more. I started taking over the build and it, like Lion King is really straightforward as far as builds compared to a lot of right. things. So it was a good introductory show. Yeah. But yeah, then I got into that and like really I did not think I probably well, actually I guarantee I owned two pairs of shoes at the time. Or a pair of Doc Martens, <laughs> a pair of uh Chuck Taylor high tops. And like uh -huh. that, that's as much as I thought about shoes at that time. <laughs> but getting into it and learning about the craft, I really got I really got into it. And it yeah. really like um like it combined all sorts of aspects of these things that I liked. Like yeah. I, I I worked as a welder at one point. There's enough metal work uh, yeah. and then worked as a props maker. And there's so much of that type of sculptural work. I yeah. worked in costumes and there was so much uh, Blair, you know, cutting design. and sewing and yeah. designing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it just ended up, I was surprised more than anyone, but I, it just ended up being something I was really interested in. So I pursued it from there, mm -hmm. worked for another theater, Stratford Festival, which is a little outside of Toronto. Uh -huh. for, for a couple of seasons in the shoe uh -huh. department there and then yeah then just went on a bit of a whirl whirlwind I, I um, ended up getting a job with Cirque du Soleil not in shoes but in costumes in wardrobe okay. went uh -huh. on tour with them for a couple of years uh -huh. and all over the world yeah. yeah so sorry I feel like I'm totally rambling yeah. on but no, it's no, a really it's, indirect it's way it's your life <laughs> that's amazing yeah and, so how long then, ago was how long ago was Cirque du Soleil I did two years, 2003, 2004. Okay. And then uh, decided because I was running a show, it wasn't very creative work. And I really missed the hands-on of making shoes. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to leave and come back to Toronto at that point and start my own studio. Mm -hmm. And literally the week I uh, put in my resignation with Cirque, um, I got a call from a company in Belgium saying, hey, we're a circus company. We're doing a show in Las Vegas. We need a shoemaker. You've been recommended. Would you be willing to come? And I'm like, like yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I, yeah. So I ended up, uh, and that was just like trial by fire. Like I, I 
I was in Tokyo one week. I came back to Toronto for a couple of days, and then I was in Belgium living, and they thought I knew what I was doing. I kind of knew what I was doing, but it was really like trial by fire of going, okay, we need to develop you know, circus shoes for these ultra fit people in a water based circus show for Vegas. And it was just, wow. yeah, it was just like, okay, you're on, what can you come up with? And that was really like, that was the, the defining moment of, that was the first time I considered myself a real shoemaker, I think. Yeah. Is, doing that and I spent a year between Belgium and Las Vegas for them uh -huh. and then they wanted me to move back to Belgium to continue on yeah I'd been living out of a suitcase for years at that point so I made a deal with them that I could move back to Toronto start my own studio and continue to do work for them from, from here the... oh great okay. yeah and that was like next week or a couple of June June 8th or 9th 8th will be uh 15 years since I wow made do you still work here. with them do I do yeah, yeah. Wow. There are two shows, one in Vegas, which is on hiatus right now, and one in Macau that's mm. just starting back up again. So hopefully. Wow. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. then you also have um, all the shoemakers around you. It seems like you, I saw on your Instagram that you made some stations for them so they can come back to work. Do you, yeah. tra do you train everybody yourself or how do, yeah. you, how do they get into it? Pretty much because I kind of like I'm I'm pretty much self-taught like I, I learned from working with other people Toronto's never been a big shoe hub and the only reason Except there's a Bata museum <laughs> there is the Bata museum that's true have you been yeah it's... I still haven't been I need uh, to you uh, should so... once it's, the borders really are open yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah once it's open I'll go I'll come yeah, but there, is, there isn't a history of, of a lot of shoe making here Makers. in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And so typically I do train people in there. A few people will come in um, with uh, shoe experience, but for the most part, I just find people who are good with their hands. And um, then it's, it, you can usually find a place for them. You can, well, you know, there's so many stages in shoemaking. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody is good at sewing, you start them at sewing and then you work them through different things. If somebody is a good sculptor, you start them with the finishing and work backwards. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, 10 weeks ago, we had 21 people in here. And wow. Yeah. And working like crazy and not still like not being able to keep up with, with everything. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of mental. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's so great. And so yeah. the quarantine. So now it's a downtime. You made, I saw you made a pair of your shoes for yourself, which was really nice. Yeah, I you makers with no shoes. I feel like you're too busy to make shoes for yourself. It's true. And I so rarely go through all the stages. Like with, with a shop of 21 people, I spend a lot of my time on the design development and drafting oh, okay. side, right? So mm -hmm. often I'm not like I'll do all the patterns and then I'll maybe sew the first prototype or uh, yeah, first prototype yeah. before revising the pattern and then handing it off to my team. And then because I, I need to start on the next, on the next, on the next, on the next. So, um, yeah, so it's really, really rare for me to do every step of the way. Occasionally, there'll be a certain project that comes up that I'm like, okay, I need to work this all the way through because I'm not, you know, it's only 85% figured out, say. So I'll take it right through. But that's like maybe two projects a year. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so when we went into quarantine, like I, I was a bit in shock for the first couple of weeks. And I would come in here and just not do much, like uh, make sure there were no packages he waiting at the door for me and that sort of thing. But uh, I think at the end of the second week, I was feeling really kind of lost and restless and went, "Yeah, I need to make myself something. But I know that because I was feeling a little lost, the only way I could do it is if I set myself some sort of deadline. So mm -hmm. I kind of put it out into the world, into the, the, the social media world that I was going to start making shoes. And I was going to post every, um, like every step on my Facebook and on Instagram and stuff like that, mm -hmm. just so people could see the whole process. Because, yeah. you know, you, I'm sure you get the same where people are so fascinated by the process because nobody has seen a shoe get made. Right. And, and so it's I a thought, long process. So it's hard it's, to like, to, yeah, it's, hard, it's not quick. <laughs> No, it's it's true. And it's it's so yeah, I thought it would just be a good way, A, to keep people entertained. Yeah. B to get my ass out of bed and to do something. Because otherwise mm -hmm. I have a yeah, I, I just didn't want to get too down on the whole quarantine thing. 
Yeah. And then also just to share with people, like there are so many people, uh, we work a lot in film. There are a lot of people in LA and New York and London, Australia and stuff like that who are, you know, doing the same thing we are. We're, we're stuck. So I thought maybe I could give them something just to entertain them because people in the business so are often are like, oh, how does this, how do you make shoes? And I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, oh, great. Yeah, so I did that with one pair and then I've done three pairs since, like in the past oh. few weeks. I broke it oh, up with a great. bit of fixing stuff up around here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just worked through two pair for me and two pair for my wife and then I just posted uh -huh. every step online with a little description. So I thought it'd be good for people who don't know, but it's also been really interesting because... Uh, I'm hearing back from a lot of makers because yeah. because of the fact that I'm I'm self-taught. I can't do things my own way. I don't do anything traditionally. So I'll hear back from people saying, oh, that's kind of cool. I, I wouldn't have thought yeah. to do that. Or yeah, yeah, so it's actually been a really good way to connect with makers as well as just keeping yeah. people in. And everybody yeah. has different ways to do it. So if they have tips and stuff too, I'm sure yeah. you, you hear back. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, totally. Yeah. And the space now you feel you're ready. Do you think because it's a workshop, can you have like partially open? Like have you, can you have a few people there? Because you have, it seems like you have like a backlog of orders. Yeah, it's, it's hard because when quarantine happened, we had 18 shows on the floor and all of them shuttered within about three or four days. So, and all, not, right. uh, only one of those 18 have started back up again into a smaller amount. But right. I do have enough of a backlog left that we weren't able to finish before we closed that I can bring people like we've got enough work to keep people busy for a while. Yeah. And I'm hoping that by bringing people in by the time we work through that, I'm being really optimistic that other things will start happening. Okay. Like, fortunately, we do stuff all over the world. So it yeah. that kind of helps. Yes. Where like already Australia is starting to open, open. up. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Macau is opening up. And it'll mm -hmm. be a while, I think, before the US or England, which are our biggest markets open. Uh -huh. But hopefully hopefully there'll be enough. So yeah, I've I've yeah. I've spent a lot of time in the past couple of months uh making the shop work better in general, but also yeah. specifically for what we're coming back to right now the government's not allowing us to open but we figure oh. hopefully sometime in the next few weeks we can yeah so uh yeah so it's been weird so you can kind of see these yeah can we get a little <laughs> tour of your shop yeah okay? yeah for sure i i've got my phone am i able to change the camera i'm gonna try you this I, just hope I don't yeah. hang up ah yeah. there we go okay Bear with me. I'm just going to walk Ooh, to the front door because this will make sure. more sense if we start. Because I From the door. probably started at the worst point to start a tour because it was right in the middle of the shop. So oh, <laughs> there we are. So yeah, this is this is the entrance. Everything yeah. is a little bit chaotic right now because I have been cleaning and renovating and everything. That's so this great. is yeah. This, this is, is our here. kitchen area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. And then. That kind the of calendar. Uh -huh. yes. I see yes, your shoe calendar. Yeah, and it's on. It's on May. I I was at my desk <laughs> the other day and looked over and realized the calendar was still set to March. I'm like, yeah. oh my god. Okay. Fast so forward. Yes. It it looks a bit weird in here, but this is uh, mm -hmm. this is our main shop space it's so area. Organized. It's organized. I, yeah. The, all of these things are new i've just put them up this week a friend of mine yep. da in the building downstairs a carpenter made all these shields for me so that when people come uh-huh and you know a lot of it's just trying to instill uh confidence in people i don't want them to yeah. come in and worry about their safety i want them to come in and worry about the fact that we have shoes right. to make and yeah. as a result like each person has their own table here we have, okay. we've got nice 20 workstations, a few wow. less now because I've broken down, but each one I've barriered off on three sides so it's all covered in plastic. Today mm -hmm. I've just been putting these shelves in because uh -huh. I thought people might like shelves and just, you know, spoil yes. them. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is the main space. And uh -huh. like I said, we, we took over a second space, which is kind of yeah. down here. So it used to be one long rectangular space. Yeah. yeah. Now it's a big L shape. Yeah. So you know, this mess is my table. Yeah. And then yeah. I've just kind of got work tables set 
more... kind of going in a big yeah. L shape so everyone yeah. has their own space because yeah. everyone's got to be so versatile yeah uh kind of the mach sewing machines are actually let's go that way the sewing machines are inside uh, -huh. uh again everything's a bit hard to see because it's all surrounded in these oh, weird plastics okay. yeah yeah but, uh so this is kind of our sewing area uh -huh. we've got about 10 machines i think eight of them are uh, -huh. uh post beds and then just yeah. like a zigzag and a McKay stitcher and this, uh -huh. oh, this is the machine that I absolutely love this is my juke keep PLW yes. 1244 okay mm, wow I've, is that was that your first machine or uh, it wasn't I was working on some fafs some older fafs beforehand yeah and then uh I was in the market. It was, yeah, I was in the market for a machine. My machine guys who don't aren't around anymore, but uh, oh. they came across this machine and I got a really good deal on it. I tried it and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever worked on. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So this whole area is. It's, sorry, I'm laughing because wow. oh, usually it's really easy to show this space off, but now I find everywhere I turn we have these weird plexiglass. <sighs> Orders. So we've got like tall post beds oh, for boots, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and our and McKay the stitcher, stitch McKay. Mm -hmm. and then under that's are, an eyelet machine. And are there a few people who use the lock stitch McKay, or can kind of everybody use it? Well, pretty much everybody. Like uh, out of the uh -huh. twenty-one people, uh huh. You, you know, two work in admin. This is uh -huh. <laughs> this is our Boxton office that Heidi yeah. and I work at. My shop manager uh -huh. and then uh -huh. myself. Uh -huh. And then out of the other 19, including myself, uh, probably about four or five are sewers. Uh-huh. Uh, Ooh. Because I've been making shelves and things, but um, I'll try and uh -huh. turn around so the lighting's a bit better. Uh, what I find working, because we have so many bodies, Uh -huh. We have these little uh -huh. in here and then a larger, uh, just like a belt sander, because it's better mm. for us to have more people working at smaller machines than have a big machine. Ugh, the bands, or the yeah. chop saws out because I'm making shelves. Yeah. But we also have a couple yeah. of Fordhams uh, for hand carving. Uh -huh. So we've got two there mm -hmm. plus the bandsaw and then these other machines and then we've got another we'll get to it eventually another similar room on the other side of the shop so that not everyone is always coming to the same direction there uh, right sorry as i'm looking at my phone wow. doing this i feel like we're in a crime scene or something and everything is like plastic stuff <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh yeah. and i'll go back here this is all our leather and eva stock but uh, yes this is like nice. 15 years worth of collecting leathers up yes. top. Oh, everything wow. that's uh, yeah. But you're super organized. Decided to do reshoots and need uh -huh. new boots, so we need to have everything there. <laughs> and if you find I'm rambling at all, let me right, know. Right. I won't be super offended. Super organized. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's no, no, kind no, of essential. No, 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 it's great. <laughs> Yeah, we. I find we really yes. have to be organized because we got so many people because we're always working on crazy deadlines. And yeah, yeah and because we you never know what's yeah, next. You can't lose time looking for stuff. Exactly. Right. This, it, this, it is kind of like a factory in a way. You it's know? kind of a cross between a creative studio and a factory. A absolutely. factory. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, I don't know what Ooh. that was. Uh, and then we've just got this side room which is mm -hmm. just a work area for a couple of people. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our hydraulic press, which actually doesn't belong. I used to rent out to my friend Nelson, who uh, has his own vegan shoemaking company. Okay. And he moved a bunch of machines in. And then when he decided not to proceed with that, he just kind of left the machines. I'm like, okay, I'll look after him. <laughs> great. That's <laughs> so great. we have the hydraulic press, the belt sander in the other room was, uh -huh. as well. And uh, so, yeah, now going back towards the kitchen we've got you know, boxes and boxes I, I, wow. I will show off all my organized banker boxes that was my work from about two weeks ago uh -huh. I've just I emptied out about 75 boxes worth of crap and we <laughs> put them in to actually organize stuff so now stuff. all of our lug soles are here all of our mm -hmm. pads all of our heel like you oh. can find it all yeah, yeah that's my great. crew is not gonna know what to do with themselves 
and and then this has been the other big project where uh -huh. uh, it's a bit tight in here, but this is our fume room, so it's obviously uh, yeah. our fume hood. Yeah. Yeah. We can close off the room. Door, uh-huh. And then it used to always be really awkwardly laid out in here where we had a big table in the middle and a couple of small tables. Uh-huh. So my the same friend Sylvie who did the barriers also mm -hmm. did all of these shelves in here. Because mm -hmm. often we'll have seven or eight people in here, like have yeah. three or four people lasting, other people soling. Uh-huh. Uh, so We've completely redone this room, and I'm nice. so pleased That's with exciting. this. Exciting, yes. People are not going to know what to do, and also it's a lovely sunny day in Toronto here. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. But oh. uh, yeah, so I think uh, yeah, I think it's you're ready room. to get back. Yeah, yeah. what's and on the shelves right now? Can you uh, share us? Or is yeah, yeah. Th yeah. This is all stuff for the show we do in Macau. Uh, okay. It's another or a water race circus show. Mm -hmm. So everything is made in synthetic. None of it is done in leather, obviously, because it's in that of water constantly. Uh, the mm -hmm. show is called The House of Dancing Water. It's at the City of Dreams Casino in Macau. Uh -huh. Okay. And we've been doing it since its inception. Like we developed everything with the artists and uh -huh. the designer as we went. Uh -huh. And yeah, this is all stuff. This is all stuff we had in process when we had to close down that I figured would be done. So it's all been lasted. Yeah. And. Yeah, it's all acrobatic shoes. So wow! I bet so it you... doesn't have a shank in it. No Correct. shank. Correct. No, no right. shank at all. And then a soft insole, a little bit of structure through the heel for uh -huh. support. There is a counter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no toe caps in these, so we can get mm -hmm. a nice tight fit for the artist. I'm I'm pretty positive in the other room. I'll have a finished pair that are mm -hmm. off the last, so that'll mm -hmm. help. Yeah. Uh, the material we bring in from Giardini in Italy. Uh huh. And then we get printed at Dynamic uh, Dynamics in uh -huh. New, New York City. I don't know oh, if you're wow. familiar with them, yeah. but they they do all this uh, amazing print. foil print mm -hmm. work. And then mm -hmm. and then everything else we do here, we do all the cutting, sewing, riveting, yeah, lasting, and everything. Yeah. These That's are another good. type of acro shoe, which is not very interesting to look at, but they are very functional. They're for the yeah. sailor scene at the beginning. Yeah. And the tricky bit is is with the circus stuff is everything needs to feel like a second skin to them yes it needs to offer the support it needs to offer the technical aspects like the traction on yeah. the russian swing is what the the golden silver ones are while it's wet so it it mm. means um yeah it just means that there's so much um not even research like engineering that goes into these things like even wow. those tall tall boots are yeah. fully performing circus boots if you, if you google um, or go into youtube they have videos of house of dancing water and you can see some of this stuff on act in action it's pretty wild wow. what these guys yeah. do <laughs> did you also did you have to watch what they do to kind of design it or did you work with like a cost, costume designer there there was a costume designer and i was also in belgium during i'd go back and forth to belgium while the show was uh, in creation. Yeah. Because the the final bits of the act weren't necessarily established entirely during right. creation. So it's right. kind of working alongside them, trying to work with things as they develop. Oh, nice. this is, I'm sorry, I'm just pointing my camera, but uh, this is the other finishing room. So it's in the nice. other corner of the yep. shop. Yep. Again, we've got a bench grinder. Ben, yeah. We've got a larger finisher yep, that I've finisher. had for yep. ages. And then just a couple of Fordham stations and Dremels and stuff to do cool. the handwork. And then another bandsaw, just this one's bandsaw, for yeah. EVAs and carbon fibers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, to make <laughs> platforms and stuff. So, oh, actually, somebody, civil.leather, asks, how do you get foot measurements for people who are far away? Usually, I'll have them done at the, uh, you know what, I'm going to switch the camera around. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, usually I'll have them done by the crew, so okay. who, whoever happened to be there. If it's a show that's in Toronto, sometimes I'll send people here. Uh, but if it's in London, if it's in Australia or whatever, I will send uh, a link to my measurement sheet and then just kind of a description of what to do. Fortunately, when it comes to places like London and LA, where we do a lot of work, we're often working with a similar team. So they kind of know the process or... I also kind of get to know like their style. If somebody has yeah. um, 
you know, if I know somebody tends to be a little bit crap at doing measurements or whatever, I know that ahead of time. Right. I, okay. Right. I just put my, I just put my phone back up so I can. Okay. Can you yeah, see and yeah. you, Sorry. I guess you, yeah, you work with somebody who, who deals with all the individual actors, or, or so exactly. there is somebody who's like you know, who can get all the info for you. Exactly, there'll be a design team. It's either the designer, the, the assistant designer, or this yeah. costume supervisor who yeah. is in direct contact with the actors, doing all the costuming stuff, and they can usually get measurements or right. if not somebody else will i'm glad right. you're calling up the the uh questions people are asking because the phone's far enough away that i can't really read it that <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah well go through the questions yes please send them your our way it's a great question yeah i i had that also on my list as well um uh, my back oh oh yeah you're back so um okay cool what else do you have <laughs> So you find the people that you they that work for you through word of mouth and uh, yeah primarily yeah primarily people in the industry possibly in the theater and the costume mm. yeah totally like a lot of the okay. like say the stitchers that we have we've got four, five people who primarily do stitching mm -hmm. most of them have come either through a fashion background or a mm -hmm theater costume making background and we just kind of steer them into shoes right. uh, a lot of the other people uh, laura who's kind of like my right hand she's worked with me for about 11 almost uh -huh. 12 years um she uh comes from a theater background she had some shoe making experience also a dyer and she was just super organized so i brought her in and she just looks after so much of things here she's been amazing uh, a lot of our last year's issues come from more of a props background mm -hmm. uh An anson who is one of my main guys uh used to make custom body piercing jewelry and wow <laughs> yeah and he was just really he knew nothing about shoes he knew nothing about costumes but he was really good with his hands so, so that great. was and you just trained yeah exactly exactly that's so wonderful wait okay yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's cool cause it's a thing for them to do, and then you just see where. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh man, I can't hear you. What happened? Sorry. Can you hear me? You can hear me. I can't hear you. Sorry. It happened again. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Sorry, is it me? Oh. If you have any questions for Jeff from Jitterbug Boy, uh, please let me know. All right, I don't know what's going on. Oh, no, I can hear you. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay, so I'm gonna add you again. Somehow, hold on. It's doing this like twirly thing that it says it's waiting. I can't, huh. I wonder if it's my Wi-Fi. Sorry, my husband just went to go tell my son to get off internet. <laughs> We don't have cell, cell phone reception here, so we're relying solely on Wi-Fi. Uh, here we go. There's a question from somebody. Do you hire any intern type positions or just workers ready to hop right into shoemaking? We can answer that question in a bit. Um, seems like I'm totally stuck. <laughs> you can tell it's my laundry room. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to close it once and then I'm going to call him right back in. <laughs>